The World Endurance Championship is about to enter a new era in 2023 with the introduction of LMDH cars. These types of cars are based on an LMP2 chassis and all share the same 50 horsepower hybrid system and gearbox. While there have been several excellent videos explaining this new class structure, I'm going to focus on the four available chassis constructors, Dallara, Oreca, Ligier and Multimatic. Who are they, where do they come from and what are some of their previous cars and achievements? These four manufacturers are about to give life to the new era of endurance racing, but some people don't know they've been here for years and in most cases already have deeply rooted connections with several high profile brands. First up, the Canadian Multimatic. Multimatic is by far the youngest of the four, at least when it comes to their racing department. The overarching Multimatic company started building parts for major automotive brands in the 50s and moved to developing new parts for them instead in the late 80s. The Multimatic engineering unit was formed and Larry Holt was put in charge. Now this unit is responsible for all sorts of parts on a large variety of cars, from the door hinges on a Honda hatchback to the rear wing mechanism of the Ford GT. Holt always had a passion for car racing and in 1992 he was allowed by Multimatic boss Peter Zabka to start a small racing team. The first official Multimatic run race car was a humble Ford Taurus SHO that raced in the Canadian Firestone Firehawk Championship. The whole grid featured lightly modified quote unquote, showroom stock cars, with the by then fairly unknown Formula 3 driver Scott Maxwell behind the wheel, the excellently prepared family sedan won on its debut and went on to dominate the rest of the season. At the end of it, Maxwell and the Taurus had a whopping 600 point lead over the second place car. Scott Maxwell having an excellent run today. First time they've brought that car out to the track. He and crew chief Larry Holt were a little trepidatious about how this was going to go. At the end of the day, they've got to feel good. Multimatic's first car designed and built from the ground up was an IMSA GTS class Ford Mustang. Scott Maxwell managed a podium finish with it on its debut at Lime Rock Park in 1995. The rest of the 90s were filled with more showroom stock racing on behalf of Ford and culminated in winning this manufacturer's title in the Motorola Cup and North American Street Stock Championship. The new millennium brought with it Multimatic's first foray into the world of prototype racing, as they entered the 2024 hours of Le Mans with the home-built Lola B2K40. The car raced in LMP675 class, the interior second fastest class, just under the top LMP900 cars from Audi, Courage and Panos. Scott Maxwell was now thoroughly embedded with the team and took the Lola to 25th place overall together with fellow Canadians John Graham and Greg Wilkins. More importantly, they won their class as only one other LMP675 car managed to finish the race. To this day, it's the only time a full Canadian team stood on the top spot of a Le Mans podium. By 2003, American sports car racing began a drastic new era. Seeing as the European LMP900 cars kept getting faster and more expensive, the Grand American Road Racing Association decided to get rid of them and instead came up with the Daytona prototype. The aim was to create a much cheaper top-level prototype class and slow the overall pace down, which would in turn make the racing safer. A select amount of chassis manufacturers were allowed to make the cars and had to use road car based engines. If this all sounds familiar, it's cause this class basically laid the foundations of what LMDH is today. Multimatic was one of these manufacturers and ended up making their MDP-1, better known as the Ford Focus DP. The interestingly styled prototype won its class in the 24 hours of Daytona in that year, again with Scott Maxwell behind the wheel. The Multimatic and Ford connection kept getting stronger. Ford eventually called upon their help for the creation of the FR500C, which then evolved into the Boss 302. The FR500 GT, Shelby GT350 RC and the Mustang GT4 are also Multimatic. Basically, if you see a Mustang racing somewhere, chances are Multimatic helped engineer and build it. Another strong manufacturer tie was with Aston Martin. Multimatic provided the British brand with the carbon fiber chassis for the exclusive 177 and several other carbon parts for the Zagato V12 Vantage. In 2012, they helped Aston develop the Vantage V8 GT4 and competed successfully in the Grand M Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge in the top GS class. Meanwhile, in the lower ST class, several Multimatic developed Ford Focus SDRs were racing around as well. For 2016, Ford had Multimatic's biggest task yet, to engineer and build the newest Ford GT and its GTE race car variant. With the monumental shoes to fill created by the original GT40, Multimatic delivered and created a very competitive package. It achieved 19 race wins across IMSA and WEC in its four years of competition. 2017 saw the return to prototype racing. 
when the new LMP2 rule set was formed, it only allowed for four manufacturers, so Multimatic partnered with industry rivals Riley Technologies to get the best possible shot at being one of the four chassis to be chosen. It worked, and the Riley Multimatic Mark XXX LMP2 was born. This chassis was also chosen for the basis of the Mazda RT24P, that raced in IMSA's newest top class called DPI, which greatly modernized and replaced the old DP class. The LMP2 car was relatively uncompetitive, being campaigned by only a few teams around the world. It quickly got overshadowed by the Orica 07, more on that car in a later video. The Mazda meanwhile was seemingly outgunned at first with its tiny 4-cylinder engine, but together with the legendary Juiced Racing team, a thorough upgrade in 2018 was done to make the Mazda more competitive, and in 2019 it broke through and had three back-to-back -back victories at Watkins Glen, Mosport and Road America. By 2021, Multimatic was fully in control of racing the Mazda, and it would be its final season, as Mazda pulled the plug on the program. They ended its career on a high note by winning its final race at Road Atlanta. When Multimatic wasn't busy building racing cars over these past few years, they were busy helping create some of the most famous supercars and hypercars, as they were involved with the creation of several Aston Martins, including the CC100 Speedster, La Gonda Taraf, all of the Zagato Vanquish variants, the Valkyrie and Valkyrie AMR Pro, and even the James Bond DB10. And the Valkyrie isn't even the only hypercar with the Multimatic connection, as the suspension found on the F1-engined Mercedes AMG1 also comes from Multimatic. Multimatic then is a motorsport parts and engineering powerhouse that quickly rose through the ranks. Its influence is spread far and wide across pretty much all sorts of vehicles, racing or not. Despite their LMP2 car not being the best of its class, all their other achievements were more than enough to convince Porsche to partner with Multimatic for the creation of what is probably the most anticipated LMDH car of them all, the 963. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on the next one.